in a park at the moment. It's near Archway Station. Don't know the name of the park. And yeah, I had many thoughts when I was walking down this way. I walked down from Archway. And as I was walking down the road, I was listening to Eftemin New Atlantis. It's a wonderful record by a wonderful producer. Really transcendent sound on there. It's almost a sort of new age mystical sound, but encapsulated in this very kind of sleek, driving techno. It's almost, I wouldn't even call it techno, I mean, it's, it's propulsive, four to the floor beats for most of the tracks. And then there's these very interesting sort of playful tracks like the last track, The Sound House, and it sort of he experiments a lot on this record with interesting sort of marimba-esque sounds or kalimba or whatever the hell, you know, dul dulcimer kind of sounds, hammered string sounds. There's all kinds of very exotic sounding, but it also feels familiar in a weird way. Well, we're definitely playing a few of those tracks in my sets. I'm planning a few sets. I've got a nice one already planned out. Just need to record it for you. And those will go on YouTube, actually. I decided to put them on YouTube. And you know, there's, there's loads of people I was very inspired by in terms of mixing and I just want to pay homage to those people, basically. Doesn't matter if only a few people listen to them. You know, they're, they're great fun. And I've got to give a mini review of the Denon SC Live 4. It's a device I bought recently from eBay. Denon, amazing um, quality to everything they make. This is not sponsored by Denon, believe it or not. Amazing quality gear, extremely affordable. Pioneer is fucking the Pioneer tax. It's like the Apple tax of the DJ world. You get, because they have this monopoly on club systems and club... Uh, mixers and things you know pioneer is nice it's nice but it's it's kind of standard when you've used other things it's just the bloody price is you know you're paying three to four hundred pounds more for something that you know it does exactly the same thing it does less honestly anyway point being denon sc live 4 is a great piece of gear fully all-in-one four deck system i got it for 850 pounds only which is like 150 off um and yeah, I've just been fiddling with it every day. Just you know, it's got speakers in it as well. The speakers are very powerful for you know if you're just doing home stuff. They don't sound tinny. They don't sound plasticky. They got a nice, warm sort of fat at low end, honestly, and it vibrates the whole unit. And a lot of people reviewed it and they said, oh, it's interesting when you actually use it. The unit itself actually vibrates when there's heavy bass going through it which gives you a feeling almost of actually being in a club um, loved everything you know engine dj is wonderful you know i was i was using tractor for a long time pirated version of tractor and just fiddling on tractor i learned to mix with a mouse funnily enough i actually learned to mix with no external gear just a mouse and a few keyboard shortcuts and you can do you can do stuff with that you know i'd recorded a about five or six quite good mixes with just a mouse and no no uh, cue or whatever but it's very good actually having a cue you know it's, it's good to it's good to not have a cue because i think that there's so much to say about this you know in terms of having a cue having the headphones you get lost sometimes in the world of the headphones when you're trying to like beat match everything perfectly in the headphones you're not focused on what's coming out of the speakers in, if you were in a club you wouldn't be focused on the crowd you'd be too much sort of you wouldn't be feeling the energy of what's happening but yeah the point the point of having a cue obviously is that you're able to you know beat match get everything synced these days but then with, even with even when things are synced you, you can't rely on your eyes people tr try and rely on their eyes too much and they oh it's not gridded properly or it's not you know but you've got to just listen if you don't learn to beat match I, I learned to beat match on vinyl as you should do, in my opinion. I think that's very important, being able to beat match on vinyl and, you know, make vinyl in time. But obviously, you know, you can do a lot more, you can be a lot more free and a lot more flexible when you do have loops and you do have cue points and you do have all this kind of digital stuff. 
but also having headphones and having a proper queue in you know you get it lined up in the queue but then you've got to bring it in you've got to have confidence to bring it in and actually just do the mix you know you can't just live in the headphones the whole time um, so I use a queue minimally I just use it to kind of you know keep track of things make sure things aren't fucking clanging like mad haven't used all four decks at the moment just use the two because using four suddenly becomes like well, I'm I mean you understand you know, someone like Jeff Mills and uh, Sunil Sharp how the hell they'd managed to deal with three decks of vinyl going I mean it's understandable but it, it is genuinely you've got to move so fast you've got to make snap decisions you've got to be super aware of how every track sounds what's playing it can get very messy very quickly and there can be something that you've missed and then you just you're in a world of hurt because you've forgotten that there's a third tune playing or four tunes playing or whatever. I was thinking about using the, the, the other two decks. It'd be cool to use them as... Could have a noise on there, could have a, an ambient sort of soundscape or background that you can bring up and use for effect sometimes. I know Function uses sometimes uses a third channel to bring in a, a, a noise or a swooshing sound or some kind of sort of field recording-esque sound when he wants to create that kind of build up tension and he's, he's got that to hand every time um, and also you, you can use you get samples of it. I, I wanted to put in some Dark Souls samples or Bloodborne or something some dialogue or you can do so much interesting stuff you know the big big inspiration for me in terms of mixing is obviously Sasha and John Digweed and their Northern Exposure CDs you know just the way those are mixed is, is just magnificent and those aren't even you know they're not, I don't know how those were made, honestly. And, and, and obviously, before you had Northern Exposure, I think you had Renaissance. You had the first Renaissance mix collection um, that Sasha and Digweed did, which was known to be kind of like, you know, at the time, that was really the pinnacle of mixing. You know, they would do these extremely long blends and beautiful, everything was beautifully in time, but beautifully in key as well. They were, you know, they really chose the songs so perfectly that they, were, they would complement each other like a glove. Um, absolutely beautiful choices, you know, and the way that that's just a seamless journey, but the way they also viewed it as a journey, you know, they, they viewed it as taking you on a journey and you, you have to be under their command, you know, you've got to completely give yourself in to what those guys want to play when you listen to those CDs. And once you know what's going on in those CDs, you know, you're really anticipating the next transition and you're kind of trying to hear what they're going to bring in, how the next track comes in. If you've heard the tracks individually, you're like, oh, I can hear an element now from, you know, the William Orbit remix of uh, from a vinyl leaf or whatever, and it comes in, you're like, oh, yes, this bit's coming in now. Um, and you're hearing almost with the DJ's ears, you're trying to hear. It's just like the same with painting. You know, you look at a wonderful painting and you think, how did he do it, you know? And you, obviously you have the first impression of the painting and it's just, wow, but then you try and take apart the individual elements and you look at what he did and you know the little bits individually and then you think oh it's not so hard really you just have to combine those in a, in a forceful and vivacious kind of way you know uh, and obviously yeah there is a big spontaneous element to mixing i don't think all mix i think mixes that are done in a computer i never like the idea of doing these ableton mixes where you have everything's kind of locked into a sample or whatever and you, you trigger them and you, you've got them all pre kind of arranged i think that there has to be a spontaneous element when you're doing a mix where you choose a track and you bring it in based on a feeling but that that can be practiced and that can be definitely attuned you know you can't just go in blind you have to know exactly what's going to happen in the track anticipate the next bit to get the perfect sort of blend and the effects you know i i, I am big on the effects it's just that i you know that they're hard to it's easy to go overboard with them i like personally like using reverb to to make a track fade into the background when it's playing you know when you're trying to take it out i like using a long reverb to kind of end a track with a kind of a and also you know there's a, there's a really nice effect on the denon called recycler which is kind of like a feedback delay and you can really do some wonderful kind of really big kind of spacious transitions with that Again, it's all about knowing the machine. Richie Horton, you know, Richie Horton, he says, it's, you know, I'm not doing anything special, but I'm, I've arranged, what I've got is I've arranged it in a way where 
I can't even make a mistake if I try. I've, I've, I've got perfect access to everything. I know exactly this button does this, this button does this every time. If I make a mistake, it's not the technology's fault, it's my fault because I've you know missed the button or whatever. But he's made it so simple for himself. He's like, well, I can't really fail. And it's the way you set it up. You know, you can, you, you got to learn your gear. You got to learn what. Think that it's better to learn what a few pieces of gear can do, rather than trying to know. You know, trying to trying to have every piece of gear in the world. Some people got obscene, stupid setups, particularly with synthesizers. You know, the gear acquisition syndrome is, is crazy with synthesizers and plugins. Plugins is worse, obviously. You know, but, and you'll find that you only use about five. You know, you use you, human being can't even deal with most of this fucking shit, honestly. You know, it's someone like Richie who mixes with four decks all the time. You know, it's because he's mixing techno and he's mixing quite minimal things. You can mix with four decks. You try and do that with you know anything else, and you're you know you're going to make a splattered mess the whole time. And I I noticed that Tractor brought out a new version recently that actually is able, uses AI to turn everything into stems. You can actually it actually does quite a good job of dissecting songs and taking the stems apart you know so you, you can actually kind of tell, you know he's useful in a way for kind of having a vocal isolated and things because i do like having a vocal that you can sort of you know you can loop over something else and that turns into a totally new tune you know as uh, richie said about when he saw jeff mills he was always fascinated with the way that Jeff would play two two tunes and then a mystical third tune would emerge from the two tunes so that would that would be a totally different thing in itself and that's obviously part of what Richie wanted to do the Dex effects and 909 um, mixes you know because he really was and then that, that that went on and on until he would taking apart tunes at a sort of a granular level and just sort of turning them into something that was a complete collage it was almost like a you know it was a Dardarist collage but it worked really beautifully you know yeah, and there, there, there's there's many things to say. There's many things to say about it. And you know, I did want to mention that England is in a state at the moment. There's bad things happening in England. There's been a series of extremely bad incidents, and you know, people say law and order is breaking down, social cohesion is breaking down in England. Uh, but for some reason, I didn't want to talk about it when I sat down. I wanted to talk about tunes. So there you go. See ya.